A blast at a hospital in central Gaza kills at least 500 people. Israel denies any involvement. Desperate to stay connected, Gazans turn to hospitals to power their mobile phones. China's president gathers world leaders in Beijing to mark the 10th anniversary of his Belt and Road Initiative. Chaotic scenes after a blast hit the Al Ali hospital in central Gaza. The Hamas-run health ministry says at least 500 people were killed. Israel denies any involvement in the airstrike. Day and night, Israeli bombs continue to hit targets said to be linked to Hamas in the Gaza Strip. It's in response to the militant group's attack on Israel on October the 7th that killed more than 1,400 people. Israel's campaign has left more than 3,000 Palestinians dead. The Israeli army has released images of an air raid that killed one of the Hamas commanders, Ayman Nofal. His death was confirmed by Hamas. Nofal is thought to be the group's highest-ranking general military council member to have died since the war began. Israelis too are on high alert as sirens warn of incoming rockets from Gaza. Shells have fallen in central Israel and the coastal area of Ashkelon. The Iron Dome has stopped a barrage of rockets fired towards Tel Aviv and Jerusalem. With Gaza increasingly deprived of water, food and electricity, its people are having to become more resourceful to survive. Cut off from the outside world, communication is now considered an essential resource. To stay connected, residents are flocking to hospitals to use generators to charge their phones, despite the threat of Israeli bombs. Israel is enforcing a full blockade of the besieged Gaza Strip in response to the unprecedented attack by the Hamas militant group on October the 7th. 2.3 million people live there. At the Shura military base in Israel, families sit and wait. They're hoping for news of those who've been missing since the Hamas militants attacked southern Israel on the 7th of October. It's here that the remains of those who died are being authenticated. For 10 days, this man has waited for news of his cousin. His cousin was attending a music festival near Israel's border with Gaza. But Israeli medics say the condition of many of the bodies makes identification difficult. Everything that we've already seen at all, something else that kind of shakes us, um, another horror comes in. Dismembered bodies with feet and arms and uh, hands missing that were cut off. Those who've managed to recover the bodies of families and friends are struggling to find peace. As Israel continues its intense reprisals against the Gaza Strip, Hamas militants are still launching rockets into the south of the country. Thousands of people have been killed on both sides of the wall. Belgian police closing a cafe after their forensic investigations in Brussels where suspected terrorists and attacker Abdesalam Lassoued was shot and killed early Tuesday. 
On the pavement, police markings where the bullet holes are still visible. The 45-year-old Tunisian who was illegally in Belgium killed two Swedish football fans Monday night ahead of a game between both sides. The neighbourhood was shocked by the events. Depuis 6 heures 20 matin, je suis passé dormir, j'ai eu l'angoisse, j'ai eu très peur, mais bon, mais c'est tout quoi. The incident in Brussels was the second terrorist attack in Europe in the space of one week where a suspected jihadist killed a teacher in the French city of Arras. Brüssel utcáin a hétfő esti támadás után jelenleg nyugalom van, de a feszültség érezhető, és nagyon sokan azt kérdezik maguktól, hogy a közel-keleti események után vajon Európa egy újabb terror hullámmal néze majd szembe a közeljövőben. Terrorism expert Cloud Monique tells Euronews that he fears for a fresh wave of terror attacks coming to Europe. Je pense que on allait avoir une vague de terrorisme dans le monde. Ça peut être en Europe, c'est en Europe aujourd'hui, c'est en France et en Belgique, ça peut être demain aux États-Unis, ça peut être n'importe où, mais il va y avoir un choc terroriste qui va suivre cette ce qui se passe au Moyen-Orient. Ce qui se passe en Israël, c'est une nouvelle motivation, c'est une nouvelle incitation qui permet de faire ressurgir et, et, et d'augmenter le djihad. Mais fondamentalement, il faut comprendre que l'islam radical est le problème de base et que, derrière, et que le, le terrorisme est juste un outil qui ressort quand il a un bon prétexte pour ressortir. But he also says that there's little risk of large-scale coordinated terrorist attacks in Europe since there's no capacity left for that. Instead, attacks by individuals are more likely. Donc aujourd'hui, ce qu'on a, c'est plus des attentats individuels ou des attentats en toutes petites cellules familiales ou amicales. Mogushkov, euh, l'homme qui a attaqué à Arras, travaillait avec sa famille, son petit frère, un cousin, euh, son grand frère qui était déjà en prison. C'est ce genre de choses-là qu'on qu 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 va voir, qu'on risque de voir, et c'est très difficile à contrer parce que euh, les services de renseignement peuvent s'attaquer à un réseau, parce que dans un réseau, il faut communiquer, il faut téléphoner, il faut échanger des mails, il faut se rencontrer. Si vous travaillez à préparer un attentat avec votre frère, personne ne va le voir. Cloud Monique says European governments should intensify their intelligence gathering and sharing over the next few weeks and months. І сьогодні особлива вдячність Сполученим Штатам. Наші домовленості з президентом Байденом виконуються. Виконуються дуже влучно. Атакамці себе показали. Авдіївка потрапляє під обстріли постійно. China is marking the 10th anniversary of its Belt and Road Initiative, considered the centerpiece of leader Xi Jinping's foreign policy. Russia supports the initiative but hasn't officially signed up to the BRI. Leaders from 140 nations are attending the two-day event in Beijing. Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban and Russian President Vladimir Putin met on the sidelines to discuss Budapest's access to Russian energy. Relations between the two countries have suffered due to EU sanctions on Moscow. It's been a decade since Beijing launched the global infrastructure program. It was designed to boost trade and China's economy by better connecting the world. It's since poured around $1 trillion into building bridges, ports, roads and power plants in poorer countries. It's also spent billions of dollars bailing out some struggling with the financial burden. Kenya, Laos, Zambia and Mongolia are among them. China has denied claims the BRI is a debt trap for developing nations. 
the EU's Global Gateway was launched to give emerging countries an alternative. The business and employment platform LinkedIn is set to slash 668 jobs. Its owner, Microsoft, says the layoffs represent approximately 3% of the company's workforce, which currently stands at 20,000 employees. This is the second round of job cuts this year, after LinkedIn fired over 700 members of staff in May. However, its profit margins are on the rise. The company says its annual revenue surpassed 13.5 billion euro for the first time at the close of the last financial year. Greta Thunberg has been arrested after protesting against the oil industry. The Swedish climate activists demonstrated in London against a meeting between representatives of the British government and the oil industry in the framework of the so-called Energy Intelligence Forum. Surrounded by activists, Thunberg accused them of going in the wrong direction and depleting a dying planet to enrich a few. Five other people have also been arrested for obstructing traffic. Walt Disney Studios has released a new trailer to celebrate 100 years of cinema. Once Upon a Studio features 543 Disney characters from more than 85 feature-length and short films, celebrating 10 decades of storytelling. It's also releasing 10 classic animated films in cinemas across the world for a limited time. However, numerous actors celebrated in their own way by going on strike in front of Disney headquarters in Los Angeles.